Right guys, we're here to see Corey Leaf with Grant Cardone Canada. Yes, uh, he's a power player. We're gonna interview him and sit down for about 45 minutes, go through what he's been doing in business, but more importantly, the health challenges he's been facing, how he almost died and overcame that. He's back on, it was all natural. There's just crazy stories we're gonna share in business and health and life. We're gonna go upstairs and see him right now. This is an interview you're not gonna wanna miss. This is the Obscurity to Authority podcast with your host, Darren Cabral. Corey, thank you so much, man. Oh, man. Pleasure to have you, man. Thanks Dude, for it is, making it's the pleasure time. to be here. Awesome, man. I've been waiting for this for a long time. You've yeah. been on the podcast twice Over already. the internet. Over the internet. Yeah. We've DM'd back and forth. I watched all your great runs in the, in the new, was the Hellcat? Yeah. In Mexico, obviously. Those were cool. Don't speed in Canadian roads. <laughs> yeah. Mexico only. I've been following your come up. You've been doing some great things. Cool, man. You're making big money. Yeah. What are the numbers right now? Um, I wouldn't call it big, but we did uh, four million in sales in our second year business. See, that, that's crazy, man. So. There's a lot we're going to learn from this guy. Yeah. So let's take me back. Tell people who you are. Yeah, so I'm the president for Grant Cardone Canada. I also own another company called Yesa, which is Young Entrepreneur Sales Academy. And we're a business that we, we basically either train your salespeople, that's what we do with Grant Cardone, or we are your salespeople with Yesa. Mm -hmm. So we'll meet with companies, we're in an office right now, and you know, our sales business represents other companies. So a company wants a group of salespeople, they hire us, we figure out what their targets are, we figure out what their brand is, we find out what's their message they want to convey to their clients, and then we build a sales wow. team to achieve those results. So that's what I do. But more importantly, it's not really about what we sell. Yep. It's about what we do with the salespeople. It's about yes. educating them. We take these young guys, yeah. we, we fill the sales positions with 18 to 35 year olds usually, yeah. Yeah. and then we give them an education at the same time. Yeah. So I just sat through one of those sales meetings and the culture you guys have here is incredible. Yeah, like you, you could like probably it? You could take the most unmotivated guy off that street behind us, pluck him in here, and that guy's gonna come out cheering. Like, yeah, how, do, how do you build that? I how appreciate that, that. You know, that's, um, building culture into the business is everything. So um, it really it really starts from the vision of the company and constantly hitting that on with your people all the time. I mean, Puya knows it. Uh, we're always talking about what's the vision of the business. So you start with a vision and values. If you have the vision and the values down, so vision is where are we going? Like yeah. what are we looking to achieve? What is everybody's role in the journey? Mm. And then uh, what are the values of the business? What are we prepared to do? What are we not prepared to do yeah. from an ethics standpoint? Yeah. If you have the ethics of the business in, the values, you're constantly communicating on it and remind everybody of the vision, the culture is strong. When you lose sight of the vision and it just becomes about selling, things fall apart. And you have a great leadership team. Yeah, and you have a great leadership team. I mean, I think that was a big part of it. You have great leaders standing up in front of the room. It's not just you sitting up here doing everything. You found people and placed them in these roles and nurtured them to be what they are. Well, I mean, you find good people already. I mean, you can't build a Puya, so I got Puya over here. You can't build a Puya or build a Daniel, but what you can do is create an environment where they want to stay, where they're attracted to come in, and then you can give them mentorship and guidance if you're ahead of them on the journey. So. Definitely got to give kudos to my team. We picked a good team. I think I'm good at recruiting. I think I'm good at attracting talent. Uh, that's what I use my social media for. That's what I'm doing stuff like this for, is to find good talent. And then, yeah, creating an environment of high performance and, and good values. Because guys like Puya and Daniel, they don't want to stick around an environment that's not positive and that's not ethical. Yeah, I mean, it is really hard. Like when you find those entrepreneurial guys that are self-starters and driven, they tend to have this itch to do it on their own. Yeah. They want to go out, they want to, so to keep them in an the organization is pretty tough, right? So I can definitely vouch for that. And I think Ed Milet has the best quote around that, which is have a vision. I think it was him. Have a vision so big that other people's dreams can fit within it. Yeah. And I think that's what you've done. You've created this giant dream that everyone else can actually feel like there's no ceiling. Yeah. That's, they can come in here. It's funny you say that because that's the biggest challenge that we deal with. So that's why the whole company is it's Young Entrepreneurs Sales Academy, not Young Employees. Right. Because so many of these guys want to come in and... They want, you, you teach them a bunch of skills, you give them a bunch of data, you give them a bunch of mentorship, and then they want to start their own business. And we want that too. But what we've done is we've built a staircase. So a sales rep can come in, he can be a sales rep. Mm -hmm. He goes through the curriculum, he goes through Cardone University, he goes through Yes Academy, our curriculum, right? Then we graduate him into a more senior sales role. Uh, generally, we start them in residential sales, so selling to consumers. Then we graduate them after about a year into business to business. And so on, why is that? Why do we start them in consumer sales, that door to door? Because when you're dealing with uh, door to door or telephone mm -hmm. sales and you're dealing with a the consumer, there's less gatekeepers, there's less influencers, it's a much right. more straightforward sale. Right. So that's that first step that they need to get mm. down. They need to learn how to articulate a, a product, they need to know how to ask good questions, right? Yeah. Do a proper needs analysis, 
um, talk about features, advantages, and benefits, and like learn how to close a deal with like a consumer on a simple product. Right. We give them a lot of experience there, and then they're millennials, so obviously they want everything now, <laughs> right? So we're going to graduate them from grade one yeah. into grade two. And our grade two uh, of our company is a business to business or a, a telephone sales role. Mm. And now they've got a year of door to door under their belt. Now they're gonna learn how to sell over the phone. They're gonna do that for a year and then we're gonna graduate them again into um, a more senior role. And that's what we've done. And then at the end of it, if they can get through all three, three to four years of our program, um, which we want them to, then what we wanna do is give them a sales business to run and partner with them. Wow. So they can become a business owner within our company. Because Puya is not mm -hmm. gonna do it, even if we're paying him, you know, he's gonna make probably over 200 grand this year. Wow. Okay? How old are you? 23. He's 23, he'll make over 200K. Wow. Okay, but that's not gonna keep him around. What a guy like that wants is he wants to take his vision and he wants to make his own company. So I'm happy to partner with him, provided he's willing to go through the curriculum and go through the system and get educated and have the tools to run a business. Right. So that's, that's the whole young entrepreneurs element. We take these guys, we put them through the curriculum and at the end, we can either help them get a sales job or we can partner with them to start a sales company. That's very cool. So yeah. you, get, you have guys that are actually quite high earners. Yeah, it's not just two of them right that. there. Because I mean, a lot of people don't realize, like to make 200 grand, if you go out and start your own business from scratch, you got to crack well over a million dollars in sales, probably $2 million in sales, if you as the owner are going to take home that 200 grand after yeah. taxes, after expenses, after everything you're going to have to put through, that's basically the equivalent of running a multi-million dollar business already. Yeah. In take I, got, I got a few guys in my business who I'm paying more than I'm paying myself right now. That's crazy. So, you know, obviously I'm in, I'm in year two, so I'm not, I'm reinvesting a lot of money back into the business. Yep. But there's there's a, there's a guy in the room right now that's getting he's taking look at his fancy new suit, you know. I'm paying paying him more than I'm paying myself. No, that's that's how it is. Yeah. Like I think every entrepreneur goes through that. Yeah. I think Andy Frisella talks about it a lot as well. Yeah, I'm happy to pay people more than 100%. I get paid. That's 100%. that's a bragging right, you know. Dude, a hundred percent. Like that's your responsibility. Like you talk about ethics a lot. Yeah, that's your responsibility. Like these guys are coming on board for you with you. They're right. Like that's priority, and that's yeah. what's keeping them because they know that. You're not yeah. just taking everything for yourself and shoving them yeah. the sides, right? Well, what, what I want to do with, with these guys, ultimately, because I already went through it, is you go through these growth spurts where you come into a sales job, you kill it, and it's called the Peter Principle. You get promoted to a place of incompetence. Mm. So you get promoted until you're incompetent, right? So you're a good sales guy, then you get promoted yeah, to a manager. Yeah, yeah. And then you're a really good manager, you get promoted to a director. And then you're a shitty director. Yeah, yeah. And then you get blown out. So yeah. what we've done is, along every promotion, there's an educational curriculum that goes with it, mm. right? And then sometimes it's like asking them, do you, do you want the next role? Because I mean, right. sometimes people are just gonna be a really good manager. They're gonna make 200 mm. grand, they're gonna be happy. They're not gonna wanna move into a position where they're looking after you know, a profit and loss statement where they're looking yeah. at you know, running the actual company. Some yeah. people don't wanna do that. Yeah. So we don't force that either, right? It's the progression that they want. That's cool. So that's what Yes is about. Uh, it's it's about educating people. It's about because mm. really what I'm going after is is the schools. Yeah. That's what I like. Was that McMaster across the street? Yeah. You know. Um, you don't like schools. I think depends on what you want to do. Yeah. You know, definitely. if you want to be an electrician, if you want to be a um, if you want to be a pipe fitter, if you want to mm. be a welder, if you want to be a plumber, surgeon, you're going to go to trade school, right? Mm. If you want to be a doctor, yeah. you're going to go to Got med it. school. If you're going to be a lawyer. You're gonna to go to law school, yeah. but if you look at that, those all those trades, they all have to get real world experience. So right. if right, a doctor actually has to go in and practice right. with some people and, and get mentored, um, an electrician has to do an apprenticeship program. Yeah. But when you get out of business school, mm. is there any guarantee that your business graduate knows how to run a business? Oh, none, zero. No, zero right, but an electrician, you call an electrician to your house you or know, a plumber, yeah, like he yeah, knows what he's yeah, doing. Yeah. So yeah. our program is about okay, if these kids are coming out of business school, they're coming out with 80 grand in debt, but they don't, oh, they can make a really good cappuccino at Starbucks, Yeah, that's but, it. That's it. but they can't run a business. No. That's why I've got beef with the business schools because yeah. they're not teaching people how to run companies. In a way, I don't want to say it's a scam, but in a way it is a scam because you're taking a lot of money from people promising something that's not actually there. It's just not going to materialize. What does a business degree give yeah. you? The whole lot of nothing. Yeah. There's, like I went to school for business and it was useless. Yeah. Nothing that I learned there was applied to they don't teach you, there's just so much to the reality of it. Like you have to see it, you have to be involved in it. There's nothing that they can show you in the classroom that's gonna prepare you to run a business. No. There's no chance. Yeah. So I agree, and I think this is what we need. Like we need more people doing this. Yeah. We need alternatives to that traditional education where people can actually put these skills to use and build real world experience while making money, not going into debt. Well that's, right? in, in the whole model of Yes is we say we're offering the next generation mm -hmm. of business grads 
you know, a chance to start their career with more than just a student loan and a job to repay it. Yeah. Because what's happening out here is these guys yeah. are going to school, they're going over to McMaster, they're going, yeah. to, they're going to UBC, they're going to U of T, and they're coming out with 80, 90 grand in debt, yeah. and it's like you don't have any experience. And no one taught you how to negotiate a deal. Mm -hmm. No one taught you how to speak in front of a boardroom. Mm -hmm. No one taught you how to, no one even taught you how to shake somebody's hand, yeah. how to dress, yeah. how to present yourself. Yeah. They're not teaching the, like, the basic skills of what you need to actually produce in business. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we're looking to educate people on here. Crazy. And we convert, so you saw the sales team. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Crazy. So we had a sales team in here earlier and they're gonna go out and they're gonna knock doors today. The door knocking is the practicum. It's like the practical. Yeah. So they learn in here, you saw the drilling and yeah, the exercises yeah. and, the, and the slideshows and then they're taking notes. So we, we give them the theory in here mm -hmm. and then they're gonna go out today and they're gonna apply that. And some of those kids are gonna make six, $700 today. Some of them are gonna make a hundred but if they were in university, some of them are going to make, someone's going to, may, might even zero out today. Yeah. Somebody might get a zero today. Yeah. You know, we don't, we don't tolerate a lot of that here. Yeah. But if he was in university, he would have been going down $100 a day. 100%. No, nobody here is going to lose money today. No one here is going to go into debt further today. You know, overall, they're all going to generally come home with money. Yeah. And if they don't, well, then we're either going to fix it or they're going to go. No, I'm a big you know? believer in that, man. So you've been doing that. This system's been working really well. You guys have been growing this company. Yeah. You've done millions in sales. Yep. And you're continuing on that path. But five, six months ago, you had a setback. Yeah, I, uh, so I hustled the first two years of the business. Um, I've always been, I've been a health and fitness guy for a while. But there's a lot about the body. And I've been a, a natural health guy. But there's a lot about the body that we don't know. And I was ignoring some, some symptoms, some symptomology that I had uh, for a while. Hmm. and um, basically just hustling. Like I was eating clean, I was eating organic, yeah. um, you know, I was eating a, a lot of greens and vegetables, but I had a, a gut biome issue, like a mm. gut flora. Like you yep. basically, yep. your gut is your second brain. Yep. So you're large in your small intestines, the bacteria culture in there is, you know, that's what's a key producer of your serotonin, your dopamine. Okay, a lot of your neurotransmitter production comes from the gut. Right, and it's funny because I was having focus issues, I was having mental fog, I was having, my fatigue was going up and down, I was tired a lot, and I had indigestion, man. Like I would eat and then I would like burp for like an hour and a half, you know, like I was having gas issues. You're describing me right now. Yeah. So now I'm getting worried. Yeah, yeah, so I had this gut <laughs> microbiome issue yeah. and you know, it's from a childhood of eating the wrong food, man. Mm. You know, and not my parents' issue, but like I was eating sugar when I was at school, fruit roll-ups, fruit by the foot, like right. basically a ton of high fructose. Like a lot of us do. It's high fructose normal. corn syrup, a yeah. bunch of snacks, yeah. you know, eating a bunch of junk, a bunch of genetically modified crap. And, you know, and then um, I got put on this product called Accutane when I was like 19, like for the skin. Okay, it's like, yeah, it's yeah. like an, an acne medicine. Yeah, yeah. And, apparent, and they're getting sued right now in the U.S. Oh, no for way. that drug. Because it kills the, the gut flora. So it kills all the uh, no, bacteria. that's yeah. not good. So I end up killing off a lot of my gut flora, uh, which is the digestive bacteria in your, in your gut, mm. and had an imbalance for a long time. And then I started, you know, I started noticing that I was like feeling malnourished. And then when I was down in Florida, I got sick, and um, we thought it was E. coli, because I was basically, to not be too graphic, when I went that to the bathroom, bad. there was blood. Wow. Right? So we thought it was E. coli. So I started treating it like it was E. coli. So we started doing natural antibiotics. Well, it wasn't E. coli, it was inflammation of the large intestine. Oh. So we made it worse. With antibiotics, yeah. Well, natural, I was using natural antibiotics, like vitamin C, which is not the right thing to take if you have an inflamed colon. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, I went to another doctor and he misdiagnosed me. He's like, oh, you've got a parasite. So I did a parasite cleanse. Now a parasite cleanse is the worst fucking thing you can oh, do. Oh no. So that filled my entire large intestine with ulcers. Holy So God. I had something called pan, pan ulcerative colitis, which is basically your entire colon, your entire large intestine filled with ulcers. Basically, I, I bled out for five weeks straight. Holy cow. I lost 40% of my blood. I lost 65 pounds in four weeks. Wow. So I went from being 175 pounds, 12% body fat, jacked as shit. I was running five minute, I was running five kilometer runs in 20 minutes, like I was fit. Like not just like yeah, looked fit, like yeah, I was fit. Yeah, I saw. But unhealthy, because obviously yeah. there was shit going on. Well, well we're actually, we'll throw up a picture of that here too. Yeah, yeah. so show them like the before. before photo. You can yeah. see the before video and then the after photos. Yeah. You know, you can see I'm basically a skeleton and that's what I, that's what I look like. I'm in my boxers, you can see those. Oh my God. Um, yeah, and I basically went from 175 pounds to 110 pounds. That's unreal. I mean, that was only three months ago. And they wanted to either put me on this low dose chemotherapy drug called Remicade which is basically an immune suppressing drug. Um, 
I checked myself out of the hospital. We should tell the story. Yeah, tell it, man. I checked myself out of the hospital. I was in the hospital. So I was in Florida. I got sick. We, we went to these different doctors, got misdiagnosed, got put on this, this regimen. The regimen messed me up even worse. I started bleeding like crazy, had to fly to Toronto, ended up in the hospital on Christmas Eve or uh, uh, Boxing Day. And then, um, you know, they did a colonoscopy, basically shove a camera up your ass. Yeah, yeah. You know, luckily I was put out for that. That actually fucks you up too. It messes yeah. up the, yeah. the inside of the, the intestines. No doubt. So I did that. And then um, you basically, if we look at your body right now, so if I were to yeah. like prick your blood yeah. and, check, and check the blood, yeah. there's like uh, inflammation markers in your blood. Right. So it's zero to four is about the healthy range. Mine was at 80. So it's called <laughs> CRP, C-reactive protein. Holy cow. So my C-reactive protein was at 80 points. And the maximum healthy allowable range is four. So I was at 20x of the healthy. This is basically you're, you're, on your, you're on the road to death. So they put me on steroids at the hospital. And they're like, we, you know, the steroids aren't, they're just going to stabilize you. They're not going to heal you. Right. Um, they got the CRP down to 50. So still five or 10 times the healthy dose or the healthy where my, my inflammation should be. I was bleeding every single day, 20 times going to the bathroom, That's 25 crazy. times going to the bathroom, 25 times a day and blood, just all blood. That's got to be really scary. Oh, that was fucking me up. Yeah. Holy yeah, that messed with me. cow. So, and then uh, this, my, wow. my CRP didn't improve. So 50 points. And then I checked myself. I'm going to do this low dose chemotherapy drug. You'll be on it for the rest of your life. Remicade. Uh, or we want to cut out a section, a huge section of your colon. Oh, man. I'm like, I'm not fucking doing that. So I found this woman, this guardian angel. Her name's Sabine. And one of my clients, it's his wife. Oh, okay. And uh, they knew I got sick because he was my client. Yeah, and he yeah. called the office and they're like, oh, Corey's okay. really sick, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, well, what's going on? And, oh, he's like, he's basically losing a lot of weight. He's like shitting blood. He's got internal bleeding, like all this crazy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, uh, so she called me and she's like, "Hey, I've had what you're dealing with. I had severe Crohn's disease, and I and they, uh, my CRP was 130, and wow. I was bleeding out, and I had to get blood blood transfusions, and and they they told me that you were a death case. Like, told me to get my affairs in order. Oh my god! And I cured myself with food. So I had these doctors, and I'm, you know, it comes back to who do you get your advice from? I'm listening yeah. to these doctors with these medical degrees, degrees. and diplomas. <laughs> And they tell me, we don't know what causes it. Yeah. They tell me, food has nothing to do with it. That's what this fucking arrogant, pardon my language, can I curse a yeah. little bit? Yeah, yeah, 100%, okay. man. These arrogant assholes, with their, their, they've been educated into apathy on disease, yeah. okay? Yeah. It has, food has nothing to do with it. Food has nothing to do it with it. It makes no sense, yeah. You, I have a conduit, I have a tube in my body, yeah. and you're telling me what I put through that tube has nothing to do with yeah. whether or not it's in good shape or not? That's everything. So pretty simple right the doctor says I don't we don't know what causes it you know food has nothing to do with it you're gonna live with it for the rest of your life I'm like okay so basically you don't know what the fuck you're talking about like straight up yeah. like he doesn't have the results yeah. so therefore I'm not gonna listen to him this woman's like I cured myself you know I was I was down to 80 pounds or something like this when you know she was sick she's like I was down to 80 pounds or 90 pounds I was like a skeleton I nourished myself back to health you should see this woman now she's 55 she looks like she's 39 Wow. Okay. I did it with a plant-based diet. I have a full regimen of easy to digest foods, full of nutrients that we can start getting into your system now to keep your organs supported while we get the inflammation down. And uh, within four weeks on her regimen, I had my CRP down to lower than a healthy person, like zero, one. Wow. I had uh, the bleeding completely arrested and I was able to start putting on weight again. And then within eight weeks, I was back to 150 pounds, and I flew to Miami, Beautiful. and I met with Grant Cardone. I, I, I got myself back on my feet within about eight to 10 weeks. And wow. uh, no drugs. I mean, the steroids I'm, I'm still weaning off of. So right now, I have a bit of a shake. You can kind of see my hands yeah. shake a little bit, because you can't just come off steroids. Yeah. So I've been weaning off those. I'll be off those by the end of the month. Yeah. But um, yeah, the last five months, man, like that's the journey, dude. And I mean, I was so bad, I was in a wheelchair. Like I had no leg, you can see from those photos, show the photos again. Yeah. Um, I had no leg muscles. I had no glutes left. Like we had to buy padded toilet seats, like toilet seats that no have way. cushion in them. Yeah. Well, if you're on the so toilet 15, 20 times and a day no and you don't have an there. ass, oh you know, God. when we got in, the, uh, I was taking Epsom salt baths to yeah. get magnesium yeah. into yeah. my system. Um, we had to put a, like a little pillow at the bottom of the tub because <sighs> I had, it was my femur bone. It was just my bone sitting on the bottom of the tub. Unbelievable. And my girl was dressing me, dude. 
you know, like, I mean, I was putting on my own underwear, but she was putting on my socks, she was helping me put on my pants. Yeah, she was like, there through the whole time. Yeah, and my brother. And my brother, yeah, my brother moved into my place too, and he was taking care of me. Unbelievable, yeah. man. The scary part is how, how many, see, how many people would have gone to the hospital with that and not come out? That's the question. Well, most taking people, that advice. that sick, how severe my uh, colitis was, I mean, we could, I might even be able to get you a medical picture of what the inside of my fucking oh. guts looked like, because I have some photos yeah, yeah. Uh, from the hospital, probably won't show that. Um, most people are in the hospital for a few months with that kind of flare, you know? Um, the only thing that I'm rebuilding right now are my iron reserves, like I lost so much blood, so I have to probably, I, I'm taking iron supplements, but yeah, probably yeah. go get an iron infusion. Um, and now I'm headed to the state, so I got, it, I got it in remission mostly, like I still have some minor issues here and there. Yeah. Like I, I've, I've been traveling yeah. right now. Like I'm hustling. Yeah, yeah. Like you saw what I did this morning. Yeah, yeah. I'm running trainings. I'm getting motivational speeches. Yeah. I ran a training with the management. I'm meeting with clients. I'm doing way too much than I should be. Like I, you know, I'm still, and I'm eating vegetable juice still. So the regimen of how we did it, we did it with cabbage juice. Mm -hmm. We did it with celery juice. We mm -hmm. did it with berries. Like I literally have a whole whole thing of blueberries here. This this okay. stuff will heal you. Yeah. You know, um, but. I'm still not completely, like I'm not, I got a year of healing, dude. I have to oh, rebuild the whole sure. um, microbiome, the whole gut flora. Uh, but I'm going to the US now for stem cell therapy. Wow. You know about stem cell I therapy? Do. So that's but next. But tell me what you know about it, because everyone hears about it. I probably don't know enough about it to justify spending the kind of money that I'm about to spend yeah, on yeah. it. I heard it's expensive. But I know that I look at the wealthiest people, yeah. the wealthiest, most powerful people on the planet. I look at Tony Robbins. I look at, um, there was an interview that people should check out with Joe Rogan and Mel Gibson, where Mel Gibson took his mm. dad, who was 92, and his dad was too weak to get a hip replacement because he had a bad heart. Right. And he took him to Panama to get these mesiancal stem cells, MSCs. They were from umbilical cords, mm. right? And uh, they injected his hip uh, to fix, and yeah. it fixed his hip, and it fixed his heart. That's, oh, because wow. stem cells basically target areas of inflammation in the body. So I have inflammation right now still in my large intestines. So right. I'm gonna go and right. get an IV of stem cells. It's yeah. expensive, but uh, and I'm using, the guy who did Grant Cardone stem cell therapy is the guy who's doing oh, mine. the 10X Health Systems. Um, is that that one? Or is it different I don't guy? know, no, Dr. Carl, I don't know, he's in Texas. Oh, okay. so, I'm, so I'm flying to Dallas yeah. right now and I'm doing it. And the fact that the FDA tried to ban stem cell therapy, which they did in, in yeah. uh, the United States, yeah. and Texas just passed a law superseding it, tells me it's the right thing to do. Anything the FDA tries to suppress, nat look, they try and suppress natural health therapies, they try and suppress natural, natural yeah, cures, yeah. I know it's good. Yeah. So I'm gonna go do that. That's yeah. crazy. I, I know there's a lot of controversy around, no doubt, yeah. but I, I see the same thing. I see people in places of power with money, they're all doing that thing. Yeah. And I, I don't wanna explain it, because there could be a lot of people watching that have no idea what it is, so I, I'll give my really dumbed down You probably know more than I, I do, don't. I do not, I'm gonna give you like a one-liner. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't know anything about this medically, a stem cell is basically, it, we know the sources it comes from, which is basically it can come from like an, like an umbilical cord or yeah. something from sorry, a fetus or something. They're basically no, these so cells. No, so from a fetus is, embri uh, uh, em there we go. Em uh, what do you call those, embryos? Em embryonic. Yeah, so they're not embryonic stem cells. Okay. So, yeah, so, they're, stem, they're the other ones. Right, so yeah. either way, they come from, okay, let's say they come from an umbilical cord. Yes. Yeah. The point of it is when we're being developed and we're babies and we're growing, these are the cells that create all the parts of our body, right? Yeah. These are the cells that become everything. So what they basically are, are like, think of them like blank slates. It's a cell that can really, in a way, be anything. It can be built to be anything. So when you put it into a body with damage or inflammation, you can have those stem cells go to that area and repair that specific tissue. Whereas normally, mm -hmm. if you have skin tissue, it can only be skin tissue, right? Dude, those are perfect layman's terms, man. That's like, what I was trying to do. You just made me understand <laughs> it more, dude. You just made me understand it more. But yeah, so there are, there are two different types of stem okay. cells. The early ones back in the day, the controversial ones, were uh, embryon, uh, embryonic stem cells. These are umbilical uh, cord stem cells, mesiancal stem cells, and they're far more effective at healing, and they heal everything. I didn't know there was a difference. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the embryonic ones want to become babies. So right. those cells want to become a baby. Right. The ones, the mesiancal stem cells, they become, I think, anything. Anything, yeah. The other thing that stem cells do, so your cells go through like a division. There's a certain rate where your cells divide like every hour or every 24 hours, and mm. the older you get, that rate slows down. So these stem cells have a secretion, and they affect all the cells in your body and cause the, basically that, that, the rate of division to speed up. Oh, that's Cause cool. Because like when you're okay. younger, like yeah. let's say the cells divide every 48 hours. If an expert or somebody intelligent is listening, they probably yeah, think yeah. I sound like a fucking idiot. But it, that's my understanding is basically the cells, yeah. you're gonna basically speed up the division rate. Yeah. So when that you're 60, sense. they only divide every 72 hours, right. but when you're 20, they divide every right. 
24 hours. That's why kids heal faster. That's right. They fall, they break something, they're walking the next day. That's right. So, you know, from an umbilical cord, you can imagine how fast those cells are going to heal. I feel like our camera guy knows more than we do. He's like, I want to <laughs> say might, something. He might. I feel like he does. He dude. I feel like he's a smart dude. <laughs> but, I already but, know he's a smart dude, I can tell, right? But that, no, that, that's cool. So, but why yeah. can't we do that in Canada? Why do we go to the States? So in Canada, it's only legal uh, if you're getting like a bone marrow transplant. Mm. So um, it's not actually, because man, anything, so what's controversy? So let's talk about that for a second. Yes. You said something's controversial. Yes. So what is controversy? So I think a lot of people have their own controversial beliefs. Now, yeah. I don't know if those are correct beliefs or not, but I think a lot of the fear comes from, well, hey, if we take these stem cells, even if they come from umbilical cords, and yeah. I'll play devil's advocate, you know, wh where the, were there women at some point getting things like abortions or getting pregnant on purpose and then getting abortions to sell that. Oh, I think that was the I don't actually part of the problem. Know. I have no yeah. idea. That was one yeah. of that was one of the initial controversies that they were having. Oh, got it. That might be right. the was that the embryonic stem cells though? I can't remember, yeah. but it's basically they knew they'd get money so they'd get pregnant got and it. then they would abort the baby just to get those elements That's crazy. to sell. I hope I'm not a baby yeah. killer. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's unlikely cuz yeah. apparently there's a lot of like natural like a lot of women do just it's a natural birth and that's a byproduct. Yeah. It's just that sometimes people game used to gain that. I think it's more yeah. control in the states. It's in Mexico where it's still the wild west. Got it. Yeah. Like there's no regulation. Panama's the place to go. Right. Panama's well, actually no the place to go, dude. That's really the place yeah. to go. First, uh, but getting to uh, controversy Mm -hmm. Controversy is the media telling you to stay away from yes. something. And anything the media tells me to stay away from, I like it. I go <laughs> towards it. Because the media yeah. tells the general population to do really dumb shit. Yeah. Go to university, go to college, get a good job, mm -hmm. pay your goddamn taxes, yeah. vote for the guy on the left or the guy on the right. Yeah. Doesn't, you know, listen to the news, yeah, right? Be afraid, yeah. pay your taxes. And what else do they tell? Well, you should pay your taxes. But, you know, they, they are basically encouraging you yeah. to conform. Yeah. Right? That's Your what fear, they're doing. Usually. And, and same thing. Go see the doctor, yeah. doctor's orders, right? Like, that's what they basically tell you to do. And if you look at the top 1% of the planet, they do the opposite of what most people do. Right. So controversy is the media saying, stay away from this. It's not good. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I investigate. It's the, and I'm a big believer in that. We can talk on that because, like, I think that's, that's the control piece. Like, yeah. think about it. You have billions of these little ants running around doing crazy things, and you need some medium to control them. That's right. And I think the way you're going to do that is, one, through the process. So they build that thing of, you, you know, you're born. Right away, boom, you're in school. Yeah. And they got you for all those years. Yeah. And then as you My start kid's to not going that, to school. I, that's what I'm I I'm going to start cranking out some babies yeah. soon. Yeah. I really want to. I want to just start yeah. pounding out some babies. Yeah. My girl's going to just turn into a baby factory. No school. Baby. <laughs> no, for real. But she's, I'm not putting my kids in school. No, me neither. No way. Me neither. No way. Not, We're not the only the ones The indoctrination that, clinic. You know, I'm not going to indoctrinate my children. Do you know how many successful people and wealthy people do that and yeah. say that? Yeah. That they, they recognize that as Because once you break out of that, once you break out of the control and you look back, yeah. you're like, oh shit, I can't put things back into that. Yeah. And then people are like, well, what? you're not going to socialize them? No, that's right. I'm not. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Period. I don't even need to justify myself. Now, if you want me to extend an olive branch and maybe you can see why you should do the same thing. Yes. Um, my kid could be socialized by putting them in summer camps. 100%. I could put them in, in, in martial arts. I could yeah. put them in music school. Yeah. But to learn language, first of all, sitting in a classroom with 30 kids or 20 kids even for that matter, having a teacher at the front of the room is not a good way to teach anyway. So I'm going to teach my kid, I'm going to have my kid taught languaging through a tutor. Yep. I'm going to have math through a tutor. Yep. And then I'm going to put my kid in school on, I'm going to teach my kid how to fight. They're going to learn a martial yep. art. They're going to learn how to cook. Yep. And they're going to be around adults. Yes. I'm not going to put them in a schooling system where they're surrounded by a bunch of kids who are raised by average ass people yep. Yep. being surrounded by negativity. Yep. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm definitely not, not going to do the school thing. I'm in on know? that. And speaking of, because a lot of people are going to get mad at that. Like that, yeah. that is, that's a controversy, speaking of all things. But again, why is it a controversy, right? It's, it's, they, want, they don't want us to know that. Yeah. But it makes sense. I mean, when you, I don't want to say they, like I'm some Illuminati giant conspirator. But you think about it, it's true. There's 7 billion plus people running around. That's a scary thought if there's no direction or control. We need to put them somewhere and make sure. And then yeah. if they ever break out, we got to make sure there's some media there drilling but, fear so they can come back but, in. But the, I agree with you. The, the biggest thing, though, is if you want to have a population that's well-behaved, educate them. But, the, the, but, but there's been a ruling elite class that's been mm. rather arrogant, thinking that the best way to control people is to suppress them. But yes. when you suppress people, you actually cause issues. Mm. If you want to control... Look at this, right? Look at the poorest areas, the most suppressed areas have the most amount of teen pregnancy. Yeah. They have yeah. larger yeah. families, not smaller families, yeah. more crime. Mm -hmm. And if you look at, if you take an individual, you educate them, you teach them how to have confidence, you teach them how to read, you teach them proper languaging skills, proper communication skills, they have less kids, yeah. right? They don't, they don't have 
generally a bunch of, they don't have a family full of 12 right. people. Right. So there's more population control. So actually it's the opposite. If you want to control the population, educate them, make them intelligent, empower them. That's how you have a, a society that works really well. Right. right. And I mean, if we look out here, we're in Hamilton right now. Yeah. Um, you know, if you, look out the, if you look out the window, most of the problems can be fixed by educating the individual. I mean, fix, I mean what, what's a problem right now you see in society? What's one of the world's problems? Even pollution. Yeah. Right? If you have a really educated public, mm. right, a really, they make better choices. They don't buy stuff that's disposable. Yep. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So any, any problem on the planet can be fixed by fixing the people. I agree. I think there's, there are people in power now that don't want it to happen, though. I, th I think there's yeah, a of course, man. There's a fear. That's they, why you and I, guys like us, right. man, you got to not get comfortable when you buy that Benz. You just bought a Benz, right? <laughs> How you liking the Benz? Not long. Yeah, no, it's good. Honestly, it's good. It was you a got big the AMG. Up. We got the AMG. Yeah, you liking it? I like it, man. I like did it. Did you go from a Honda to an AMG Benz? I did. Actually, how did you, I went, how did you do that? You tell me now. No, you do I, the talking, it, hey, this man. is about you, man. No, man, I, I want to know. How did you go from a Honda? This guy's got a <laughs> Civic right now. He's like, Corey, I want to buy an Audi. What car are you looking at, Puya? He's looking at the S5. I test drove that actually. It's a nice car. It's yeah. a very nice car. So you went with the AMG. How did I you did. go from a Honda to an AMG? So I actually went through several Hondas. I, I actually took <laughs> Hondas for a long time. Um, I bought my first car. I was probably seven, six, sixteen. I bought my first Honda Civic. I was working already. Yeah. Uh, weekends and after school, I was working, and I bought my first Honda Civic. Went from an, that to another Honda Civic to a 1998 CRV. To You're a not 2000. Portuguese, are you? I am. For fuck's sake. <laughs> Portuguese people and Honda Civics. I'm from Cambridge, Ontario, and Cambridge, Ontario was Honda Civics and yeah. Portuguese people. Yeah. yeah. Did you put a fart can on the thing? Big yeah. exhaust. Thank God I didn't have the money to do that. So okay. I, I kept it all. I kept it all stock basically, okay. except for maybe that like K&N air filter I tried to. Throw you put in the an box. intake <laughs> on your Honda. Civic? I definitely tried to put something on it. Cool. But I went from that to like a '98 CRV, and then a 2002 CRV, and then a 2012 CRV. So soccer mom mobiles. Yes. Nice. And that's when I had to change the car. When one of my employees, I, I was, I was uh, at work, and I pulled in, and she goes. When are you going to stop driving a, a soccer mom van? I'm like, it's not a van. It's an SUV. It's basically a truck, right? Yeah. I'm trying to defend. It's a truck, a Honda CRV. But she was right. It's basically a soccer mom vehicle. And we're, we're Dude, doing all the listeners in Alberta are laughing right now. <laughs> They're all like, that's not a truck. I got a Chevy Duramax diesel. <laughs> it, you know? I got a four-cylinder Honda CRV. That's my truck. Yeah. So, no, it, it, was. it was. It was an embarrassing vehicle. And it wasn't something that, that was representing me well. Like, we're doing deals with It did what brands. it needed to. But yeah. It did what it needed to do. And I know a lot of people argue that. Saying, well, that's not a good use of money. Um, like not, not no, man, it is, dude. Hundred percent. I'm not Grant Cardone, man. I won't. I don't. I don't. No. That's not the thing for me. He's like, yeah. oh, like you don't need a fancy car. Like, listen, I run a group of salespeople. Yeah. I know Grant was a more, you know, he was going in and training people. Yeah. Uh, but we run a, a group of sales guys here. Yes. And personal brand was something. I mean, I didn't Huge. go buy a Lambo, but I bought a Caddy. Yeah. You know, a yeah. supercharged Caddy yeah. with like yeah. 600 horse. You need something. Yeah. Because you got to inspire. I mean, it, it's attention too. Like it, it's, I know Grant Cardone doesn't believe in that. He's just, wait, wait, wait. Gary Vee's the same thing. He drives a Rolls though. Now. So. Yeah. yeah. But see, G Gary Vee was the same way. It's just yeah. like, I don't care about that stuff. You don't need it. But I'm in your case. Like, he lives I, in New York City. You don't 100%. need a car. Yeah. But like we started from nothing and yeah. it's like, to us, it's a big deal. Like, especially being young. I'm a car guy, man. Hunt Andy Frisella. Andy yeah. Frisella. Love listening to Andy Frisella. Yeah. Um, I'm a huge car guy. He's got guy. a cool car collection. Yeah, I, I grew up on cars. I grew up drag racing cars. I had a supercharged Buick front wheel drive grandma mobile. That's crazy. That I that I turned into a 12 second car when I was that. I was 19. Oh my god! But this thing, dude, it looked stock. But it had a supercharged 3.8 liter. I changed the supercharger pulley. I put headers on it. I put an intercooler on it. It made probably 350 to 400 of the wheels. So it was like it was a powerful car. It would do high 12s. It was, You'd pull up on Mustangs, uh, Camaros. You'd pull up on 350Zs. That was the car That's before crazy. the 370Z. This was years ago. The Infiniti G35s and G37s. And you just ass kicked them in this Grandpa mobile. And uh, that's that's, that's what I had. And then uh, I got out of that. And then I got um, I had lots of Buicks. And then I ended up getting my 300. And then I got with the Hemi. And then I got the uh, the Cadillac CTSV. And then yep. I traded yep. from that. That's into a nice car too. It was really nice. And I, I had one with a manual. And then That's I went nice. from that into the into the Hellcat. Very nice. And then I just ordered a new Denali. So when I get back to Vancouver, oh, so I got I a that. brand new Denali, white on black rims that I'm going to pick up. I'm bragging now. I'm excited about that. Dude, that's good. Oh, you deserve it, man. Yeah. You deserve so, it. So, I bought that when I was sick. Really? So I was on my deathbed. I'm 110 pounds. <laughs> I'm fucking buying it. I'm like, I knew I was going to live. And I needed something. I, I, you know, the crazy thing, when you start getting sick, dude, Yeah. Uh, your mind starts to go when, mm. like, when, you're, when I was down to 110 pounds. You know, and my, my organs and everything started to like, you know, because we were checking my blood every week. Right. So the li my liver enzyme count was going up. My kidney function was going down. I s you stop thinking about the future. 
I believe it. Right, because you're just thinking about day to day and you're thinking about like, oh my God, I'm in the most severe pain in my life and oh my God, I'm shitting blood and oh my God, I yeah. can't eat anything. Yeah. And you stop thinking about the future. That's the most dangerous thing to happen because you as a being create your life by yeah. creating into the future. So I stopped creating into the future and then, you know, um, I also had, I was doing energy work as well. So I didn't talk about that. So I was mm. doing all this nat nutrition stuff. Energy work. I was doing like uh, nervous system alignment exercises. I was doing mental training exercises. So huh. your body has a set of, like this is medically proven now, right. that you have chakras in your body. So you have acupressure meridian points throughout the entire body. So there's actually energy channels in your body. And those get, when you're sick, those get blocked, hmm. right? So there's things that you can do to align that to correct it, like acupuncture is something that right. you can do to correct that, right? Acupressure is something that you can do to correct yep. that. So I was doing that every day. And the mental cognitions that you would have, not acupuncture, something else. The cognitions that I would have, I'm like, oh my God, I stopped creating goals. I've been literally living day to day wow. when I was super sick. Yep. So I'm like, you know what? I'm like, I've been wanting to get a truck, you know, as a daily driver. Mm -hmm. I'm going to order a truck. So I literally started online and it made me feel better. And 100%. I'm like, fuck, I'm thinking about the future now. I'm thinking about, 100%. you know. So, um, yeah, I ordered a white Denali with a 6.2 liter, 430 horse. That's crazy. It's a great truck, and uh, it gets delivered when I get home. Three, that, mo that's three months later. Yeah. And I think, I think it's great that you, that you made up that, that point, because I think a lot of people can relate to that. Even when you're not sick, a lot of struggling entrepreneurs, when you're in the day-to-day -day grind and things aren't working, you do that too. You stop envisioning. You stop dreaming. Yeah, you, you start caught just, up. Yes. Right in front of your face. And you need that thing. Yeah. And I think that's also, when we go back to like the car for me, that's what it was for me too. It was that thing to like, I needed something to, when I was stuck, I needed something to look forward to, to push me forward because I was looking at this. Yeah. Accounting, legal, employee. Like, yeah. And it wasn't going anywhere. And yeah. you needed that. So I think that's, it's not just when you're sick. I think a lot of entrepreneurs relate to that as well. Right? Well, you saw what we did with these sales guys here today. Yeah. Because they're out knocking doors or they're making yes. phone calls or they're talking to business owners and they're getting rejected, rejected, rejected. And then they're learning sales training and they're learning, um, negotiation tactics, but that's all this stuff. Right. So what we do is we like, we get them to look far away. Like, like, hey, that. why are you doing this now? We'll think about yeah. the skills we're teaching you for yeah. two years, four years, six years down the road and what it's going to create for you. So yeah, getting sick was amazing to be real. <laughs> I'm How still like completely feel after through that? it. Is it like a whole different experience now? Do you look at it a whole different way? I'm way more chill. And the other cool thing is, you know, um, before I got sick, so we, our first 12 months in business, we did 2.6 million in sales. I did 2.1 million of it. Like I closed 2.1 million. I had sales guys, you know, cold calling and booking yeah. appointments and I was hopping on the demo and pitching the deal and then closing the deal. Right, so I had my guys as connectors. The second year we did 4 million. The first six months I had probably done, you know, about 2 million of the 3 million that we had. Wow. 1.8 million of the, of, the, of the 3 million that we had. And then I got sick and then I couldn't close any deals anymore because I was literally right. on, literally couldn't leave my bed. Right. Um, so my, one of my business partners and one of the guys who works for me, his name's Andrew, he stepped up to the plate. Wow. And then one of my guys, Mike, he stepped up and Morgan, he stepped up and Conrad, he stepped yeah. up and Ryan, he stepped up and they started closing their own deals. Nice. And they started, they learned the whole cycle, whereas before they needed a closer to come and now they're all closing their own deals. So for me getting sick, my business became yeah. more self-sufficient yeah. and became an actual, a real company. It doesn't, Right. Most people's businesses own them. Yes. They're not business owners. Yeah, it's a job. So getting sick was a blessing in that yeah. way. I also broke a lot of addictions to unhealthy foods. I was huge on like eating really spicy and vinegar food all the time. Like, is spicy bad? Let's, let's no, but that. I was eating a lot of acidic food. Acidic, so I was like, okay. my, all my salads were covered in vinegar because I had gut issues, right? Digestive issues. I was eating a ton of salt and vinegar chips. I don't know, I was addicted to that. Me too. Spicy chicken <laughs> wings, you know? Yeah. So I broke all those addictions. So there's a lot of benefits that came out yeah. of being sick. But you got some gut issues right now? I don't know, man. It feels like, I think a lot of people are going through it now. Like you see these startups like Viome and stuff yeah. or whatever they're called doing the gut tests. And the yeah. I think a lot of people are realizing that yeah. the food they're putting into their body is causing damage. 100%. Um, I had it bad for a little while and I went to see a doctor. Shout out to Dr. Callum. He's in, uh, he's actually in Hamilton area. Oh really? He does all the UFC fighters, or all the UFC fighters, cool. the, like sports athletes. And he put me on this liver cleanse. He, he identified my issue was a liver problem. Cool. He goes, whatever you're eating has blocked up your liver. You're getting fatty liver. This is not processing well. So you're not losing weight and you're piling up all this guck and your whole system's starting to shut down under the stress. So he helped me cleanse that out. And yeah. the diet was very similar. Like when you said the things you took out, like we took out all the dairy, we took out fruits, we took out a bunch of yeah, things. Yeah, dairy's crap. Dairy's yeah. just a treat, dude. Yeah. Ain't nothing, and I'm not, like right now, like yeah. I'm on like all, all vegetable, fruit, yeah. you know, everything cooked. I can't even eat raw vegetables right now because it scratches you up inside. Right. I'm just like healing all those wounds. 
But um, dairy is a treat, dude. Hundred percent. Dairy, dairy is like you know, and I'm not like I said. If I can't, I need to heal myself to a point where if I'm in Brooklyn, I'm getting a goddamn slice of pizza. Mm. Like I will never live a limited life. Like right now, I'm down to live a limited life for the next year to heal, heal the gut, heal the heal, heal yeah. the intestines. Yeah. But I believe fully that I can heal myself so that I can go eat a. I can go punch a cow in the face, take a fucking <laughs> knife, cut a nice ribeye out of him and eat it. Like I'm gonna uppercut a cow. The moment I'm ready to eat meat, probably it will be in another six months or so. <laughs> gonna I'm gonna cow. uppercut a cow right in the jaw. Just knock him out. All the vegans are gonna be crying. Send this to a like, vegan. Like we thought you were a vegan, Corey, because I'm all vegetarian yeah. right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna punch a cow in the face. Yeah. I'm gonna uppercut a chicken. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and I'm gonna just ah. You have a camera you know? guy laughing. Yeah. Oh my you know, God. that's what I'm gonna do. Um, because it. if I can't do that, what's the point, dude? I shouldn't be on planet Earth. Can't eat a slice of pizza when I'm in Chicago. Are you kidding me? I gotta get some of that deep, deep dish pizza. Yeah. So it's not you know? that people can never do that stuff. That's not what we're trying to say. Yeah. Like it's that it's it's in my, like you gotta take care of your body. Sometimes you can do. Sometimes it. yeah. like yeah. that's gotta. It's just like in business, right? It's yeah. you can have shitty days, you can have vacations, but it's it can't be the norm. It's gotta be yeah. the sometimes, right? I'd love to eat on eat in and out burger all the time though. You ever eat in and out burger? I have. Oh. <laughs> Every time I go to the I'm States. Having, dude, I haven't had a cup of coffee in six months. That's I haven't hard. had any beef in six months. I haven't had a burger in six months. I haven't had any gluten in six months. Um, I haven't had any chicken wings. I love chicken wings in six months. I haven't had a beer in probably longer than that, probably a year. So when can you eat again? When does this get better that you can actually well, have Well, dude, to be pizza? real, I was really good. I wasn't in a flare, and then I've been traveling a lot. The altitude messes me up. Um, but I'm probably, I'm probably thinking... Um, the thing with right now is I'm getting all the nutrients, mm. which is good, but I keep every once in a while now, like I'll eat food that's still scratchy. So you just gotta think of it, like your, your crazy, intestines right? are a tube, yeah. right? And there's wounds there that they've healed over, so they're not bleeding anymore. Right. But like, imagine if you had a cut, yeah. and then You're I just kept rubbing, rubbing it, it all yeah, the time, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So healing, that's a pain in the ass, literally, <laughs> right? <laughs> literally. So um, the to rebuild the gut biome, because dude, like, if you go to the bathroom 25 times a day and your body's purging everything out and you did that for five weeks straight, yeah. there's no good bacteria left. So I have to rebuild all that. So I have to do probiotic cycles. I have to eat food that is, that is rich in prebiotics, fermented foods. Yeah. So I have to rebuild all that. And then I also have to rebuild the lining wow. of the actual intestines. Yeah. So I don't know how long that's gonna take, but I hope these stem cells are gonna help. I think so. You know, I really I do. So. I, I, it's my Hail Mary at this point because yeah. um, I'm down to do the all natural thing. You know, I, I'm not doing the drug thing. I'm not doing the chemotherapy drug, the Remicade. I'm not doing, I never took, they wanted to put me on this aspirin called 5-ASA, which is an anti-inflammatory drug. Yeah. I didn't take that. It's all natural. Um, so I'm down to do the natural wow. thing, but if the stem cell thing can speed it up, that's what I'm, It's kind of natural still. Yeah. That's What's really... today, Tuesday? Yes. So I get that on Thursday. Or Friday, I'm going to be in Texas on Friday. Keep me in the loop on that. Yeah. I want to know how that. I think I think you'll see a big improvement. I've heard some yeah. crazy stories. Hopefully, it makes me taller. <laughs> you know? no, I've, I've heard my girls like. Things. I hope it makes your junk bigger. Like I, hey, I hope, yeah, I hope no, everything I, gets bigger. If it dude. does, I'm definitely, I'll call know. you. Dude. I'm like, yo, yeah, I'm going to come down there. Yeah, dude. No, yeah. that's that's something we all need. So yeah. what's what's the next? Then I mean, assume this all works out well. This speeds up the recovery. Yeah. You're already back on your feet. You're doing business. You're hustling. You're doing sales meetings. What's the vision statement for this company, for, for Corey, for Yesa, for the next 12 months, where are you heading? Yeah, so uh, we're gonna grow this sales business to uh, 150 reps in this, hmm. from this type of business. The Grant Cardone business, we're gonna grow to a six to eight million dollar company this year. Wow. Um, and the ultimate goal is we're gonna build a full curriculum where a salesperson can get a job in residential sales, yeah. so consumer, they can work it for eight to 12 months and they can graduate into a business to business role immediately, the moment they graduate, wow. and they can do that for 24 months. And then they can graduate from there into Grant Cardone or they can graduate out of the business and we'll help them get a job. Wow. So we're gonna build our business into a fully fledged sales academy with a 36 month curriculum um, where people can get educated on not only sales, but personal development, right. goal setting, right business planning, we can, we're gonna teach them how to dress, because most of these fuckers, yeah. no one yeah. taught these guys how to dress, how to yeah. get a fancy haircut like yeah. you, <laughs> you know? So that's what we're building Yesa yeah. into, and you're gonna see Young Entrepreneur Sales Academy, you're gonna see it all over. You're gonna see our students, our graduates, will embarrass the graduates from all it. the business schools in this country. I we're gonna it. put all of the business schools to shame. Because right now, I've been a judge on these uh, panels when you yep. go to schools run sales yeah, competitions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, our sales guys will embarrass these guys. It's a, it's a joke. I believe it. Man. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna crank out the next generation of leaders. Beautiful. We're gonna crank out the next, the best business graduates that this country's seen. 
Beautiful. That's the game plan. It's a tall order, but I'll deliver. No, My you will. My team will deliver. You will. You, know? you will. And you saw that, right? I saw that. Put I in, saw that. You know, it, we're going to achieve that by putting in the fucking work. Yeah. I believe in you, man. Yeah. So where can people find you now if they want to connect? I know you're building your brand and all this now. Yeah, so it's at Corey Leaf uh, on Instagram, C-O-R-R-I-E-L-I-E-F-F. So it's my first and my last name combined. It shares yep. the E. Yep. And then uh, it's Corey Leaf um, on Facebook. And uh, it's Grant Cardone Canada on Instagram. So you can look up Grant Cardone Canada. And then same thing with Yesa. Yesa is Y-E-S-A. Beautiful. So. Definitely yeah. follow him. We'll put all the links below. You can click and find him there. But this is a guy you want to follow because I see you on the come up. Thanks, I see man. You I doing appreciate great things. That. Genuinely. Hey, no problem. We'll yeah. end on one little thing because I want to give one piece of advice to this yeah. All the millennials out there, you have a lot of young people I saw today in the meeting. Yeah. There's one piece of advice. If you were on your deathbed, if things went south and you had one thing that you could give them. I just got off my deathbed, man. <laughs> yeah. What would it be? What's one piece of advice? Yeah. If you could only give one that you think would help them shape the rest of their lives. Because they've, yeah, and because there's so many other like gurus giving mm. advice on, on the goal setting thing, I would say build a staircase to your goals. Mm. Don't try and leap to your goals. I like so that. So build a staircase to your goals. So understand that everything you're doing right now can be a step, and then there's gonna be the next chapter. Right. Like if you're in sales and you wanna run your own company, don't quit your sales job and go start your own company. Right. Like learn what you need to learn from your sales job, then get the next evolution of what you need. You can build a staircase to how you want to get there rather than just trying to yeah. jump there. Yeah. Yeah. Because everyone wants it right now. Yeah, they want it right now, you know? And I mean, I became a business owner over a seven year period. Wow. Like we can teach you how to get rich quick. Yeah. You know, I think Grant says this, or maybe uh, I had a mentor named Brad Sugars. He said this, he's mm. like, I can teach you how to get rich quick if your definition of quick is seven to 10 years. I like that. And, that. and we can do the same thing. You know, We can like teach that. people how to become a business owner quick if their definition of quick is four to five years. Which isn't a lot of time. No. That is quite quick. And you make money at the same yeah. time. Yeah. So we're amazing. hiring, by the way. Yeah. Let's, use, let's turn this into a pitch. Hey, we're so hiring. if you're looking yeah. for salespeople, I mean, if you're looking for a sales career, yeah. this is the team you're going to want to join. You guys are out of where right now. You have to, you're in Toronto or else? So we're uh, yeah, in Toronto, uh, like Toronto, GTA area, Hamilton mm -hmm. area, and then uh, actually all over, all the way down to Windsor Wow. here. And then uh, in British Columbia and Port Moody. So we're also yeah. hiring uh, recruiters. We're hiring uh, account managers. So not even like cold calling salespeople. Yeah. Sales reps. I need office directors. Basically, you guys are looking for a job. Yeah. That's the place you want to yeah, be. We're hiring. That's the place yeah, you want to be. I mean, I, I'm still. I'm gonna end it with. I'm still in shock with that meeting this morning. Like, if yeah. everything I'm doing here goes to shit, did I'm that shock to work you more you. than the skeleton photos? We Which should one? ask people. Oh. What, what's shocked you more? The business? The the team? Or, or, or the skeleton <sighs> photos. They're actually almost on par in their own weird way. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Because it's it, you don't see young people like that that are that driven. You don't see culture like that. You don't see people putting the work. You don't see leaders being leaders the way they need to be. All that's very, very unique. Like if I was going to work anywhere, it would probably be here. So All right, man. I like that. that. That's friggin' awesome, dude. Thanks I'll so take much, that. That's, hey. a, that's a compliment from you, man. It's, I know you're running a good business. I the appreciate honest that. truth. It's yeah, the honest truth. You. So if anyone's looking for a job and you want to get into that career, you've got to reach out to him. But Corey, again, thank you so much, man. Thank you, dude. It's appreciate been a pleasure. you, man. Thank you. We'll talk again. Cheers. You've been listening to the Obscurity to Authority podcast. Tune in again next week with your host, Darren Cabral, as he explores the blueprint of success. 